After 14 days at sea, we arrive at the island of Ticopia. Yeah, so uh, we've just arrived here in Ticopia and we're going to ask the chief uh, if we have permission to stay and visit the island and the volcano lake. And uh, we're bringing some coffee, sugar and cigarettes. You know, that's what people need, I suppose. Though a part of the predominantly Melanesian Solomon Islands, Ticopia is considered one of the outlying islands. It's a very remote island of only 1.8 square miles in the southwest Pacific Ocean that exists, for the most part, independent of the outside world and prefers it that way. The postcard image of a place that doesn't sell postcards. To maintain a sustainable population, the chiefs mandate that only a fixed amount of people can live on the island. Families wanting more children have to immigrate off the island. Before the modern era, they practiced population control through more extreme means, such as tribal warfare, infanticide, and a unique form of suicide called virtual suicide, where the second son would take to the ocean in a small canoe with little or no provisions, never to be seen again. Not reserved for just the young, while we were there, the chief mentioned that his predecessor was last seen taken to the waves in a small canoe. Uh, met a Norwegian family. I think they're Norwegian, Swedish. It's kind of the same. You know any tricks? Can you do any tricks? Hmm? Can you do no tricks? Well. Oh. <laughs> this is uh, Polly, and uh, I am Thomas Lien from Norway. And uh, together with my family, two kids, wife, and uh, my nephew, we're uh, coming from Norway and living on Tikopia for uh, about six to nine months. We'll see how long it's going to be. I'm a documentary filmmaker from Norway. Hi, I'm Peter Ivi, and I'm er six years old. Sammen med lillebror Jack, fetter Jørgen og mamma og pappa, så bor jeg på en øy i Stillehavet som heter Fikopia. Det er på den andre siden av jordkloden. It's quite important for, uh, for the young uh, children and for the adults as well, to, just to see that it is possible to live a good life outside of Europe and outside of Norway, a country which many people think is maybe the best in the world. We're riches, we are full of oil and no... no Hey, yeah, I'm back. Uh, no, what I'm saying is, Norway is a very rich country, and uh, the UN say Norway might be the best country in the world to live in right now. And we're very fortunate in Norway, but in the same time. I think it's important to know it's possible to live other places very good life. It's like you don't need all the things we have in Norway. You don't need all the oil we're pumping up from the sea. It's, uh, it's possible to do it a different way. And I like to show that to my kids as well. Since no tourists make their way here, the people are completely devoid of overexposure to their fellow man. Do you go fishing here? Yeah. Fishing? Yeah? Yes. Yeah? Tonight. Oh, tonight? Yes. Oh, you go at night. You su <laughs> surprise them. Steetin. <laughs> Steetin. Yes. Pyro. Pyro. Yes, for right. Oh, oh, pen, pen. Yes, yes. pen, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, do you have any pens? Pen. Yeah. Yeah, I think he, he's looking for some pens. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh, 
It bites. It bit me already two times. We totally need a pair, right? I know. This is what we need on the boat. Your toss it. Snuggle buggle? Mm. I like it. No, you don't like it. I don't like it. Let's go and get me! It can bite. Parrot can bite if it gets in. Let's go and get me! Let's go and get me! Let's go and get me! I could so have a pet parrot. It really loves jewelry, this one. It's like the necklaces and the braids. like. It's a fancy parrot. Just to get from Norway and down to Tikopia, it took us 26 days from we left Norway to get here. And uh, 10 of those days are on a cargo ship uh, sailing from Honiara, which is the capital in the Solomon Islands. Uh, coming out here, very basic. Like 150, 200 people living on a cargo ship with no facilities, no uh, cabins. So I, I, I. No cabins, uh, no nothing, no facilities. So it was pretty rough, and uh, especially with my wife and my two kids uh, living in uh, on that ship, it was a rough start. But uh, after ten days, we we came here, and uh, uh, we just came up here, and uh, I'd never seen as many mosquitoes in my life. It was like mosquito hell. We came here, it's just mosquitoes everywhere and like, oh, are we going to stay here? How long till the mosquitoes leave? Oh, just follow up when the, the leaves go dry, then you got to, to stop. Ah, okay. <laughs> and then uh, fortunately they said like, oh, this is the worst day this year. So soon it dropped down and uh, we don't have a big problem with the mosquitoes anymore. That's a big pig you have. Huh? Your, your pig is very yeah, big. That's my pig. Yeah. <laughs> does it have a name? Pardon? Does does it does it have a does he have a name? Oh, the, I call him uh, I call that pig a uh, swordfish. Swordfish? Yeah, that's right. You want to drink some coconut? Oh. Where are going? Oh, can we go up to the small house there? Then I can give you some green coconut to drink and there. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay. We are going. <laughs> so uh, we decided uh, Tikopia would be our home for uh, between six to nine months. We should live here and uh, just leave everything in Norway and, uh, and move to Tikopia and try to live as the people do in Tikopia. On this island they don't have electricity, they don't have, they have some solar panels. They don't use money, really. They don't have engines. So it's, it's pretty much back to basic. And living in the nature and learning from that. And they've been living on this island for about 3,000 years. So they know quite a bit. It's, uh, it's one of the few places which is not really dependent on the outside world. That's kind of fascinating, I think. So now we are... Uh, we become a part of the family of the chief clan of Tafua. So they're helping us, we're getting food and uh, the fishing and we join fishing and uh, we're growing a little bit of tomatoes and some stuff back there, so we will see. But mainly we get a lot of help. And we're not here to, to do any missionary, we're not here to teach the people about anything like environmental stuff or we're not here for preaching at all we just have to learn from them it's not we gonna teach them how life is it's more that we who wants to learn from them what they know from life <laughs> <laughs>